Atención. Gracias. So, it comes to this. I have no wish to fight, but this time, I cannot yield. Though the world may think me a mad, desperate fool, I will hold fast to my conviction. Time. 
tranquility I require. Must and then gather to me. Ancient brand, unleash your power. Dancing winds, here's my foe! Stars on high, wall is ready!
dancing winds! He is my foe! Even when transformed! But I am not finished yet! It's over, Hermes. In the name of the Convocation, I hereby take Meteon into custody. And setting aside the matter of your nomination, you will come with us too. We require your knowledge to assess and resolve the situation. <sighs> Meteon, I am so sorry but that I could have listened to your report in full, reflected upon its meaning, and conveyed it to others, that they might reconsider their chosen course. But I have failed, and that wish will never be realized. However, ere our fates become the province of others, I bid you tell me just one thing. Was there happiness in those distant stars? Was there a reason for living. We conducted our search as per your instructions. We scoured historical records, communed with the spirits of the deceased, heard the final testaments of the dying, welcomed their shadowed hearts into our own. One race had striven to create a world bereft of animosity. They renounced relationships to avoid interpersonal strife, and in so doing brought about societal collapse. One race had renounced war and devoted itself to the enrichment of its people. They were conquered. Though they destroyed the enemy in reprisal, they could not regain their former glory. One race had concluded that finite time was the root of all woes. Aspiring to shatter its shackles, they went in search of infinity. They discovered nothing is infinite, and that neither time or death can be cheated. Disillusioned, they gave up on the future, and themselves. 
One race had discarded all things that gave rise to sorrow, hoping to have only joy. They found joy lost its savour in the absence of sorrow, and lost their will to live. The worlds apart, these peoples shared a belief. The belief that they had tried their best. That they had tried to fulfill their potential with every step and success. In the course of which, they learned the truth. That they would never be free of fear and sorrow, anger and despair, of loneliness, so long as they yet lived. Even now, their souls cry out for oblivion. And to this song of anguish, I lend my voice. We lend our voice. Oh, beloved mankind, shimmering jewels of beautiful Atheris, rejoice, for we will free you from the cruel yoke of existence. There is no need to struggle in vain, for in nihility awaits salvation. You will know peace and serenity, and it will be beautiful. We will make our nest at the edge of the universe, and there in the dark of dead worlds, hoard sorrow and suffering. There we will sing, our chorus ever louder and ever clearer, that our song may reach even this ether-shrouded star. Such is the answer we have found in the stars. Such is the gift we now offer to Atheris. you to decide our fate, to decree we live or die. Have you lost your mind? You heard what she said. She means to destroy us all, yet you'd still take her side? In the name of the Star, we have discarded those creations that we deemed flawed. If we ourselves are flawed, it does not stand to reason that we too should be discarded. That is sophistry, and you know it! Perhaps it is. Perhaps I am wrong. But who is to say that you are right? Let us settle this with a determination. In my authority as Chief Overseer of Elpis, I will make a judgment on man's fitness to exist. If he can learn to value all life and retain his will to live, even should his end be justified, he will surely find a way to avert his demise. If not, he will perish from the star. As with all determinations, provisions must be made to ensure fairness. Kairos! Awaken! Memory reconfiguration system Kairos activated. 
awaiting instruction. Command. Universal memory alteration. Target area. Catesis Hyperborea. Starting point. Arrival of Emmett Selk. Of the convocation at Propylion. End point. The present. Raise the memories of all events. And replace with a vague recollection of the following. I was here. Preparing to demonstrate the functionality of Kairos. To Emmett Selk. And Hithidaeus. Meteon's shared consciousness became unstable. She and her sisters could not sustain their existence. And all dissipated with a burst. The resultant shockwave accidentally triggered Kairos, which erased several days of memories from all present. Execute. Command acknowledged. Initializing. Three processes remaining to execution. Bravo. I dare say one would be hard-pressed to make it fairer. Everything that you told us. Everything that has happened. The fact we've even met. It will all be gone. Go, Meteor. To the edge of the universe. Where none can reach you. Hermes, won't you come with me? If you were to shed your flesh, I should be able to carry you. <laughs> I will remain. As a man, I will oppose the oblivion you bring. Silly fool. Had you said yes, I would have granted you the gentlest end. This ends here! Fly, Meteor! That is far enough, Hermes! Argos, to me! First process complete. Two remaining to execution of memory reconfiguration. As if we needed more pressure. No matter what, you cannot forget what happened today. For it is the key to saving your future. Your world. This fight is our fight. What comes after, our problem to contend with. Not yours. No. Your own struggle awaits. And no one else can take your place. You must flee this place with your memories in time, and I will see that you do. Now then, where is it? There you are, my little confluence.
Meteon's gotten away. Second process complete. One remaining to execution. No time for brooding. Listen well. Beyond lies a spatial confluence that connects the interior sections of this building. I will destroy the confluence and force open a way outside. When I do, you must jump through. I cannot tell you how sorry I am. Neither can I let you escape! Too brave by half. Exemplary work, as always, Emmett Selk. What? But how? I thought the confluence was... over... Over there? Yes. We were rather hoping you would. It was never anywhere but where it is now. The instant those two began making their way towards nothing, was clear the plan was a diversion. I'm quite incapable of destroying a confluence, I must confess. A gambit brazen beyond words. Though we've grown accustomed to reckless improvision due to the antics of an incorrigible associate. Though, in the case of certain present company, incorrigible is an understatement. Honestly, I'm beginning to suspect it's a requirement for every asset. There's no time! Quickly! Even now, I do not believe your tale. I would not suffer us to walk such a wretched path. Still, if it must be said. Do not squander it, the legacy I leave you. Final process complete. Executing universal memory alteration. Go, Argos! I'm fine. Just a little tired. Can it be true? Are we the only ones left who see beauty in the world? In life? Are the stars above no more than husks of fallen civilizations? And yet, I feel her. Though she is unimaginably distant, I feel Meteon's presence, and the place whereto we must go. 
Ere she made good her escape, I placed an enchantment upon her, one which allows us to follow her trail. She has already left the outermost bounds of Atheris, and continues on her way. Given the vastness of the universe, it will still be no easy feat to track her down. But thanks to Emmet Selk and his Ladeus, all is not lost. We remember. So long as we remember, our fates remain ours to shape. I'd like to know too. Let us ascertain the situation at Cutesis Hyperborea, where they should still be. Given the likely state of their memories, however, it would be imprudent for us to approach them directly. In which case... I'm sorry, my friend. I've asked much of you this day. But may I trouble you one last time? <laughs> Argos will investigate in our stead. We will share in his consciousness and see and hear as if we were with him. Now, close your eyes and open your mind. Thank goodness you are unharmed. Unharmed? There is a gaping hole in my memories. I can scarcely remember arriving here in Elpis. Forgive me. I was... preparing to demonstrate the functionality of Kairos to our guests. But Meteon... her shared consciousness became... unstable. And she... she... So, that's what prompted the state of alert. And when you went to investigate, you were caught in Kairos's accidental operation. So it would seem. It's all a blur to me. Such an unfortunate accident. Oh, and what of Vena and your other companion? You went inside together, as I recall. We did? If Venar was with us, I have no recollection of it. But that there is her familiar, is it not? The fellow seems happy enough, so I think it's safe to assume his mistress is well. I haven't the slightest notion who this other companion might be, however. Ah, well, that individual struck me as a different, for want of a better word. Perhaps it wasn't actually a person, but some manner of creation. Curious. I must ask Venar about it when next we meet. Yes, yes, you do that. Now, if we may tend to Hermes, whatever this Meteon did, it seems he bore the brunt of it. Once you are fit to travel, you will return with us to Amarot. We need to make certain there are no other ill effects. Also, I am here on business of the Fourteen. We've already had the conversation, like as not, but since your toy wiped my memory, we'll have to have it again. Yes, of course. As you see fit. This Kairos, it manipulates memories through the emission of etheric waves, correct? There is a theory which holds that memories scoured by blasts of ether are restored when the soul is cleansed in the underworld. If true, then perhaps when our time comes to return to the star, 
we shall remember these few days we have lost. I doubt aught of interest occurred. Look forward to the revelation if you like, but I should prefer to reminisce on more meaningful moments. Let us rest, if only for a while. After all, you and I... Oh, we still have a long, long way to go.